Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we bless you. As it has come to this time of preaching, I ask that you please bless my mind, my heart, my spirit, and my voice, that all that I say may be of you, that your word may go forth, and that some will make no more about the goodness of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Giving all honor and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, giving respect to everybody in God's house, under God's grace, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. How you doing? Good. For those of you in the house, that was good. I don't have to ask again. For those of you at home, please put in the chat. Let us know how you are doing on this day, and God bless. I do want to go ahead and get started. I ask that you please open up your Bibles, turn your Bibles on, open up your browser window. We're going to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 36, and we're only going to read one verse, which is verse 32. Jeremiah 36. And we're going to read verse 32. If you have it, say amen. If you need more time, say hold up. The word of the Lord reads, So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe Baruch, son of Neriah. And as Jeremiah dictated, Baruch wrote on it all the words of the scroll, that Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. May our minds and spirits be blessed by the reading of his word. I want to talk to you today from the theme called to keep creating problems. Called to keep creating problems. In 2021 in Nashville, Tennessee, Fifth Avenue was renamed Representative John Lewis Way, in honor of the late 17 term politician and lifetime civil rights activist. However, just a few days ago, a Tennessee Senator and a state representative introduced a bill to rename a part of John Lewis Way President Donald Trump Boulevard, to specifically replace a part of John Lewis Way with the name of a one-term president whose term was objectively unremarkable in any positive way, who said that he couldn't say one way or the other whether John Lewis was impressive because he's not sure if he ever met him because he didn't come to his inauguration, and who many of his decisions in office represented the things that John Lewis stood against is an effort at intentional erasure. And sadly, this intentional effort at erasing a legacy is, is, is becoming a common practice very openly in front of all of us now. When uh, you have a DeSantis in Florida who is rejecting African-American studies and banning books, a significant amount of them written by black women, all based on his Stop Woke Act, which woke in his context means wrongs to our kids and employees. Uh, which restricts lessons training on race and pretty much the, as, as, as a quote uh, any teaching anything that makes people feel like they bear personal responsibility for or must feel guilt and anguish or other forms of psychological distress due to racial history all of those are intentional erasure even the use of the word woke which is African-American vernacular English and has been around forever and means to remain alert to the social issues and systems working around you and against you. Their columbusing of the word and misuse of the word is intentional erasure. This current Congress's efforts to remove voices of diversity, intentional erasure, the, incor uh, the incorrect police reports that are filed to a Tyree Nichols, that's intentional erasure. When body cam footage is turned off, that's intentional erasure. When complaints are filed and no one decides to take action, that's intentional erasure. Even in the faith community, completely turning Jesus into an anti-free will, personal God of wealth and hate. So no one feels responsibility to do the work of loving others. That's intentional erasure. Trying to wipe out what is and replace it with something else. But what those people and others don't always know and what they have not yet accepted is that there are certain things you can't get rid of. There are certain things that just keep coming back around no matter how often you try to delete them. Now listen, I will say, if you don't have a legacy or if you haven't really left an impact or if people don't really care about the issue, then yes, things can be wiped out. But if it actually matters, even when you try to reduce it down to the smallest voice, somebody's going to keep telling a story. Somebody still has the work to do. Somebody's going to continue on that legacy. 
In an interview, rapper 21 Savage said he doesn't consider himself peers with rappers like Drake and J. Cole. And he said the reason that he separates himself is because they have like years of fan base and work, uh, and those fans are going to be there until they die. He said, that's, that's different. He said, I feel like I'm on, I'm, I'm working my way to that level, but it doesn't feel the same. I feel like I could do something corny, and I would lose a lot of what I got. That wouldn't happen with them. What he understands is that there are some people and some things that have left such an impact that they can't be erased, no matter how hard you try. You can't eliminate history. You can't change important stories uh, completely. You can't try to force indoctrination and lies. You, you, you can try to change books, and you can try to change what's happening in schools. You can try to steal other people's achievements. You can try to wipe out people's impact and legacy. You can try to change Jesus and commodify the church. But in the end, there are some things you can't erase, no matter how hard you try. Someone is going to tell you that Columbus didn't discover anything. Somebody's going to tell you that Lincoln was not this benevolent figure that he's painted to be. Someone always knows. Someone's always going to teach the truth. And the godly truth will always create problems for those who are trying to erase. And in this 2023 season, we must not only keep telling the godly truth, we must also keep being the godly truth. We must also keep living the godly truth. No matter who tries to erase it, no matter who tries to ignore it, no matter who tries to redact it, no matter who tries to devalue it, no matter who doesn't see the point, keep going with that purpose. Keep going living the mission. Keep going making godly moves in your life. Keep going even if people are ignorant. Keep going even if they don't know why. Keep going when they try to make you question whether you should stop but keep on living and being the godly truth and yes it will create problems for those trying to erase but friends family visitors people of God we are called to keep creating problems you don't believe me you don't believe me you don't believe me I can see it in your faces even y'all online I can't see you but I can feel it coming through the internet you don't believe me but look I have receipts the text message of Jeremiah chapter 36 so this is what's happening in the text uh King Jehoiakim it was, was a godless tyrant of a king who would not do right by God when we get to chapter 36 Jeremiah who's the prophet of that time gets a message from God telling him to pass on this message of future disasters that are going to happen to the people because they won't get their life right. Jeremiah gets a guy by the name of Baruch to write down what he says and Jeremiah dictates what God told him and Baruch transcribes it. He writes it down. Then Jeremiah told Baruch to go all over the place reading the scroll so everybody could hear it. One day, Baruch gets advice that he and Jeremiah should go hide because the king isn't going to like what's being said. When the king hears what's on the scroll, he's not even worried. He doesn't rip his clothes. He doesn't go through the whole mourning stage of, oh, no, God's going to do something. He doesn't really care about the warning from God. Instead, against protests from some of his own officials, while sitting in his winter home, he cuts up the scroll three or four columns at a time and throws it in the fire and then ordered Jeremiah and Baruch to be arrested. I hope y'all got that, because this is the next part that I like. After all of that, God told Jeremiah to defy the desires of the king. Yeah, verse 28, God tells Jeremiah, all right, he burned the last one. Take another scroll and write everything down that you had on the first one. And then I need you to add some stuff directly to the king letting him know how I'm going to punish him for what he just did. In verse 32, Jeremiah did what God said, called Baruch back in, gave him another scroll, and had him write down everything that he said before with some new additions. Jeremiah was called to keep creating problems. When the king wanted to erase what God was saying through Jeremiah, God said, go say it again. When the king wanted the people to remain ignorant, God said, no, teach them again. When the king burned the scroll, banned the books, altered the education, God said, no, write some more. I'm calling you to keep creating problems. There are some things you cannot erase. And God's message, God's purpose, and God's mission are some of them. As one commentator said, you do not alter facts by neglecting them, nor abrogate a divine decree by disbelieving it. Just because some people want to ignore the truth doesn't mean other people can't recognize it. Just ask George Santos. And we have the same call that Jeremiah had in this text to keep creating problems. Look at what God told Jeremiah to do. Verse 28, 
He said, take another scroll. Stop right there. Point one, keep going. Somebody say, keep going. Somebody at home, type, keep going. Jeremiah is in hiding, trying to make sure from a birdie who whistled in their ear, let them know you better go hide because the king's going to come for you. In hiding, the last scroll has been burned, and God says, go take another scroll. God tells them, keep going. I, I know they're looking for you. I know that they're coming to arrest you. Take another scroll. Keep on going. I, I see what they're trying to do. I need you to keep on going. I see how they're trying to silence you and me. I need you to keep going. I know that things may get complicated. I need you to keep going. I know that they are going to rewrite history, take another scroll, and keep going. And if you don't take anything else away from this sermon, I need you to take that. Keep going and do what God has called you to do. Keep going, keep building, keep growing, keep being what God's called you to be. Keep going in your life, in your school, in your business, in your family, in your community. Keep on going. I know people will try to wipe out the work that has been done. Keep on going. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't stop doing good. Don't stop serving. Don't stop working. Don't stop grinding. Take another scroll. And then God tells him to do something else, point two. The second thing is, God tells him to keep what was. Somebody say, keep what was. Somebody at home, type in the chat, keep what was. I know, I know, I know, an explanation is necessary. First thing I, got, I need you to do, keep going. But then I need you to keep what was. God told Jeremiah, take another scroll and rewrite all of the stuff I said the first time. Keep what was because the message is still relevant. The work is still needed. The voice is still necessary. One of the most heinous things you can do to people is convince them that their own history no longer has value. Because devaluing your history is also devaluing yourself. Youth, adults, seniors, friends, family, visitors, people of God, don't let the world convince you to get rid of yourself. That's your history. That's your faith. That's your experience. That's your testimony. Keep what was. It still has value. It doesn't mean that you have to celebrate everything that was. Some things should not be celebrated. Some things should be reviewed for lessons on what not to do and how to move ahead from here. But keep what was. What does that mean for us? Whether others want to forget them or not. Remember the truths we were told and keep on telling them. Remember the lessons we learned and keep on teaching them. Remember the God that got us through and let's keep on believing. Remember the stories of those before us and let's keep on inspiring. Remember the work that was done in the face of hate and evil and keep on working. Remember how God got you through and keep on believing. That's why Sister Holmes stood up here and read that history. Remember what was. God has brought you a mighty long way, and because God has brought you, you believe that God will continue to bring you. Church, remember the work we've done, and let's keep on doing it. Remember the God we served, and let's keep on serving. Remember the call to love, and keep on loving. It will create problems for those who want to ignore it, but we have been called to keep creating problems. You want to embrace evil? It looks like I might be a problem. You want to oppress? Looks like I might be a problem. You want to manipulate? Looks like I might be a problem because I still remember what was. Keep going, but keep what was. And then the last thing is, and I'll be out your way, brief sermon today. The last thing is, give them something new. Somebody say, give them something new. Somebody at home, type in the chat, give them something new. God told Jeremiah, take another scroll. Write down what was, but I need you to add something to it. This time, I need you to tell the king something. People of God, give him something new. Don't only keep what was. Give them something new as well. Put a little something new on it. God always calls us into something new. God is always working with us to see things differently, a new way or a new focus or a new method or a new purpose. We can work like we used to, but you need to put something new on it. If it's social justice, look, you can protest with your money, but you can also protest with views and likes. 
If it's service, yes, you can work in the street, but you can also do it on social media. If it's ministry, you can serve in the church, but you can also serve in your life. If it's reaching your goals, you can follow an old example, but also add something new to the model. You can reference what happened before, but adjust for what's happening now. And the beauty of it is God is still speaking and God is still working. God is not only the God of yesterday, but also of today. One of the issues that the people in the Old Testament had with God was they kept saying, where is the God of yesterday? We heard the stories. We, we heard what God has done. We heard about all the miracles. Where are those miracles now? And what they could not understand is that God was working differently for them in that moment than what happened before. Yes, keep what was, but make space for God to do something new. Listen, God is always saying something new or at least in a new way to us. God is always showing you something new in a new way. Don't get lost always looking behind you. Give them something new. Take another scroll. Keep what was and give them that something that God has put in you. We are called to keep creating problems. God's word can't be erased, so keep living by it. God's message can't be eliminated, so keep sharing it. God's instructions can't be deleted, so keep following them. Even when people are being evil, they still can't eliminate good. Some things can't be erased. Trying to eliminate good is trying to hide from the sun. It's a 24-7 effort. And the minute you make an adjustment, you're going to see a little crack of it slide through. You can't erase everything. Now, here's one thing that I have to say. When I talk about following God's purpose, people get nervous. Because they're saying, Pastor, you're saying that we have to keep creating problems with I don't know what kind of kickback that's going to be on me. I, 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 I like Jesus, but they killed him too. So, 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 uh, how, do, how do we do this? Because I don't think I'm coming back in three days. The truth of this is, I'm not promising you safety. I, we, 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 we all grown in the faith. I'm not promising safety. I'm not promising easy. I'm not promising everything you ever wanted. I'm sure there's another church you could tune into right now to give you that. That's not what I'm promising. I'm not promising you anything other than the fact that the Lord will be with you as you do God's work. The reason that that should inspire you, though, is because you have to remember, I'm not saying that you follow your plan. I'm saying that you follow God's plan. Yeah, when I say keep being a problem for people, I'm not saying do what you think you should do and then just hope God gets on your side. No, you're supposed to be on God's side. Your plan doesn't become God's plan. God's plan becomes yours. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? People are nervous because they are confusing their plans with God's plans. Lord, how am I going to do this and this and this and this and this? God didn't tell you to do any of that. That's your desires, and that's cool if you want to aim for your own things. However, we are supposed to be linked up with God's plan. And here's the other issue. If, if we confuse the two, that's when you begin to notice how the messages get messy. There are churches right now that on one end were very supportive of law enforcement and then immediately said defund the FBI from the pulpits. Why? Because their plans, they believe, are supposed to be God's plans. And since I don't like it, now I shift it, and God is supposed to be on this side. That's, that's, that's not the kind of problems I'm talking about creating. We always say God is not a God of confusion. One, that scripture's out of context. That's talking about a worship service and people speaking in tongues and prophesying in the right order. So take that. But two, if I wanted to play that game of God not being a God of confusion in the situations of problems, the truth of it is it doesn't mean that someone, it doesn't mean that someone is wrong because you're confused. You might be. Just because confusion is present doesn't mean somebody did something wrong. It might have been you. We have to make sure we are in line with God. If the problems are bothering you, then maybe you are the big problem. When godly truths bother you, 
you have to stop and ask yourself, am I the cause of confusion? When someone being godly bothers somebody, they have to stop and go, am I the cause of this confusion? And listen, as we move through scriptures such as this where they aren't all happy and shouting on the end because we're not sure that we're going to get everything we want on the back end, I just need to remind you that if Jeremiah isn't a good enough example for you, please always know that there was another man by the name of Jesus who they tried to get rid of. But there are some things you can't erase no matter how hard you try. Jesus who showed us how to keep going despite the efforts to shut him down, to keep what was as he taught God's word and to add something new as a son of God. Let Jesus be encouragement to keep creating problems as we carry out God's word. Because here's the deal. When we move ahead and we know we are in line with God, then we know we have the blessing of God with us. And as I've already said, if God be for us, if God be for the mission, if God be for the purpose, then who? can be against us. We need brave believers in these days and times. It doesn't mean that I'm saying you go out and you just start tearing up your communities. I'm saying that you have to be brave and confident in what the Lord has called you to do. In this text specifically, we see that the king wanted to get rid of Jeremiah, wanted to quiet Jeremiah, and God tells Jeremiah, no, I need you to go say it again. I know he burned it. I need you to write it again. Because there's some things that can't be erased. And if they are erased, often it's because we weren't doing what we were supposed to do in telling that story, taking another scroll, and continuing on with our efforts. Believers, stay strong. Continue to push. Yes, for your hopes and for your dreams, but make sure that you're also thinking about community. Make sure you're thinking about the message. As you see everything going on in the world, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. That's our call. We are not problems because we are problematic. We are problems because often the people who we are speaking to and the people we are trying to influence, those who we are trying to work against are often on the other side of right. Being on the evil end, being on the bad end, doing things that are not of God. Again, just because somebody's confused doesn't mean that the other person did something wrong. Sometimes it's on you. Let us continue to do what the Lord has called us to do. Continue to love, continue to work, continue to push forward. Remember what was, know what God is telling us now, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.